Hello, today I'm going to do a pattern review on a bag pattern for a change. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe for more video content like this. So this is the bag in question. It is from the Debbie Shaw book, Brilliant Bags. This is called the Office Bag and I've just done the pattern as it is in the book. They do have a couple of variations. There's one where you could put some um, buckle straps on to make it look a bit more like a satchel. I just decided to follow the pattern as it was for the first attempt. The measurements I've used as well are from the pattern, so obviously if you wanted to make a different size you could, but you just have to make sure you adjusted all the pattern pieces correctly. This is These are the measurements that they give in the book. So in terms of the fabric that I have used, so the one on the outside you may have noticed is from my Freya pinafore which I reviewed uh, a number of years ago now and it's originally from Fabrics Galore. I got it from the Knitting and Stitching show which was at West Point in Exeter and I obviously purchased it a few years ago if I made Freya pinafore then. Um, so this was just made out of the remnants from that. It is a needle cord fabric which I was a little bit concerned about using just because I wasn't sure it would be strong enough for the hard wearing use I'd put it through. However, what I've done is I've put interfacing on it just to give it a bit more structure and reinforcement so that hopefully I don't end up poking holes through it. In terms of the lining, I have used a nice simple bold yellow cotton twill. I was actually saving this fabric to make an apron, so it's not technically a remnant. However, I'm really hoping that I've actually still got enough fabric to make the apron as well because I still want to make that. But I just couldn't resist using it for this pattern just because I thought it complemented the main fabric so well. I've also used a bit of bias binding, so you can see I've got this sort of like maroon, maroonish red colour. Um, I just happened to have a remnant of it and it was the perfect amount to be honest. Um, I've also got, if you can see in here, um, I needed a longish zip. Um, so. Fortunately I had one which matched the bias binding which helped. This bag also has some other items you need to purchase, so you need this twist lock at the front to fasten it. Obviously if you did decide to do a different variation of it, if you did want to use buckles you'd need to buy those instead. Um, you also need two D-rings for your um, shoulder straps. You also need a swivel clasp I think it's called, so you need one on either side. So actually I've got um, an extra chain bit on this one um, just because I found it at home but um, most that you buy would just be connected like that. Another thing you do need for this pattern is fusible fleece. It's just um, this nice thin stuff so it it's not too noticeable but it does just give your bag an extra bit of structure. So in terms of difficulty it's quite a simple make to be honest. I think it looks more complicated than it actually is. Personally for me I found the bias binding wasn't too bad and it was quite a nice detail to add. I'm really pleased with the result of it. She's also got some really good instructions on how to attach the bias binding in the book. There's, I can't remember what it's called, it is the design toolkit at the start. So um, she's got all the main, the main uh, skills you need to learn at the start of the book for reference, just because I guess they overlap on um, various patterns in the book. So I found that, yeah, for the bias binding, they had a couple of um, bits of advice which I haven't actually used before and I found that it really did improve the finish so I was really happy with that. The main part I found challenging was just stitching in the corners of the lining piece just because it's got, um, if I show you, it's got two sections in there so it was a bit challenging stitching some of the corner bits. Apart from that though I'd say that it is really straightforward because you're doing a lot of straight lines I'd say the only real curve is actually this bit when you're using the bias binding. The other thing I found difficult was in the instructions it said to you that you needed to stitch your strap and then turn it, turn it right sides out but you've actually got both the lining piece and the exterior piece that interface so it's really difficult to do that. I think it was also made worse because I'm not sure I used the correct seam allowances which I'll explain in a little bit more detail while talking about clarity. The clarity of the instructions wasn't great in my personal viewpoint, but it might be because I'm just not used to Debbie Shaw patterns. This and I don't do an awful lot of I also don't do an awful lot of bag or accessory patterns. I normally either just make them up myself or 
just don't do any. I couldn't see anywhere in the book where it said what the seam allowances were. And this might be assumed knowledge. Debbie Shaw does a lot of quilting based projects and I guess most quilting based patterns would use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So it might be that you're just assumed to use a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm not sure. Or perhaps you're meant to actually add the seam allowance, in which case I've done this completely wrong. I think it's a real shame it doesn't specify that. Obviously, if someone else has the book and they have noticed where the seam allowance is specified, please let me know which page and which paragraph, because I've, I've had a look and I just can't see it anywhere. And I genuinely don't know if I've just completely overlooked it and just can't see it. Because I wasn't sure on the seam allowance, I went with half an inch just because other parts of the pattern asked for half an inch, which isn't the best way to do it. And as a result, it did mean that my straps were narrower than they should have been, which might be why it was so hard to turn them out. As a result, it has made me wonder whether the whole bag's half an inch smaller than it should be, or, you know, if I've missed out the seam allowance, whether <laughs> it's, you know, um, significant, you know, significantly smaller than it should be. But, um, the main frustrating part was I had to source new um, new D-rings and the swivel clasps. Fortunately, I did find something at home. Basically, it's the reason why I've got a black slider, a uh, silver D-ring and swivel clasp, and a sort of rusty bronze coloured twist lock at the front. I was originally going to have it all in this, um, the colour of the twist lock, but they were just way too big for the bag in the end, so I had to go for something a bit smaller. I don't think the strap actually looks that bad this thin, but obviously it was just a shame I couldn't use the items that I had bought to go with it. There was what a mistake actually on how, what pieces you cut, so they got the lining base and the lining sides incorrect, so I don't know if it's just someone doesn't pass and test and double check everything's correct, or you know it's just an error that just got overlooked, but anyway, so watch out for that. Fortunately, I could just trim off some pieces um, because I used a solid colour on the inside and I wasn't too worried about which way the cotton twill um, diagonals were going. But obviously, if you did have a directional print, you'd probably have to recut out those pieces again, which is a bit of a waste of fabric. The book is really good because it has got lots of images in it, but I did feel like at times it did need a bit more information. It kind of felt like it did jump between instructions a bit. Um, again, it might just be because I'm not used to making bags, but I do feel like if you are a beginner, you might struggle with that a little. Just to show you, so yeah, you can see there's, there's some lovely instructions here. But yeah, I just felt that it, um, in some places, it needed just a little more guidance. The other part I found quite unclear was that it didn't explain that well how you attach the, the flap on the bag to the main outer bag section. And it might just be me misinterpreting it. I'm not sure, but I felt the end result for me personally was that it looks quite messy on the inside. I've got this um, line here um, where the top stitching is, and then there's obviously the seam where the flap attaches to the main piece, but I feel like it hasn't come out that brilliantly. In terms of the design of the bag, I'm really pleased with the end result and I really like the design. I'm a big fan of shoulder bags anyway, so that is the main pattern out of the book which appealed to me, which is why I've done it first. I really like how the strap is attached separately and that it's fully adjustable. I really like the lining of this bag and this is probably the main appeal to me now. I didn't understand how the lining worked out before I made it. Now I've made it, I really like how she's designed the inside of the bag. So, if you have a look here, I've left my work items in here just because it shows how much you can fit in here as well. So there are two open sections and there is a zipped compartment in the middle. And actually this part of the instructions I did find quite clear to understand. And I just really like it. So as you can see, um, you could easily fit some A4 documentation in one of the open spaces. So I've added, so I've got a few A5 notebooks in here. And yeah, I've got plenty of room to add, you know, snack tubs, extra shopping bags, um, I've got my glasses, and then yeah, I can keep more secure items in the zip section. Obviously you could add some more pockets or compartments if you wanted, you know, to keep your house keys in or, I don't know, your phone. Um, but actually I found that this works really well for me. 
Although I might add more sections if I made another one, depending on the purpose of the bag. I also feel like it's quite secure because you've got that zip section in the middle, but you also this um, turn clasp on the front works really well. Time taken is quite a tricky one to answer. The longest section by far is cutting out all of the pieces. Unlike a dressmaking pattern, you need to create all the pieces yourself. So you either need to draw out all the different size rectangles you need, or you need to um, draw them straight onto your fabric. You've obviously got to be really careful that you know you draw those out accurately as it will impact the final design. You also need to make sure that you cut out your sections the right way up. So if you've got a directional print like the one I've got on the front, um, because this needle cord has a slight nap to it, you need to make sure that you've got the pieces the right way up and that the pattern is running the right way. I say making up the actual bag is really quick. You're stitching lots of straight lines so that makes it really fast. So that's pretty much it. Overall I'm really happy with it. Although I did have issues with the pattern and the fact that they did make a couple of errors in the pattern probably because they didn't get anyone to pattern test it. That was a shame. However, I feel that as long as you're really careful with the pattern and keep this in mind, it is a brilliant end result and I really like how she's designed this bag, so um, overall it does get a thumbs up from me. So inspired by making this bag, I did actually make a couple of accessories to go with it. I made this water bottle carrier, um, just because I love bringing a bottle of water out with me when I'm on the go and obviously it didn't fit in the main bag. and. Sometimes I don't want to store it in my main bag anyway, just in case, you know, um, it accidentally leaks and ruins something in my main bag. I also made a little zipped pouch or purse to go with it, just because I have a few small items um, work related that I need to bring with me to work. I was always trying to find them in my old bag, so I thought if I made a little zipped um, purse, it would mean that they were kept together. So with these two items I just made up my own pattern but I did record the progress on making them so I hope to share with you how I made these two over the next couple of weeks. I hope you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.